pleasant afternoon to everyone. We are the group 9 and for this afternoon our topic is all about the English Renaissance architecture. So here's the overview of our report. Did you know that the English Renaissance architecture may be divided into the following periods? These periods will be further discussed by my group mates later. The English Renaissance was a cultural and artistic movement in England dating from the late 15th century to the early 17th century. It is associated with the Pan-European Renaissance that is usually regarded as beginning in Italy in the late 14th century. As in most of the rest of Northern Europe, England saw little of these developments until more than a century later. The beginning of the English Renaissance is often taken as a convenience to be 1485 when the Battle of Bosworth Field ended the Wars of the Roses and inaugurated the Tudor dynasty. Renaissance styles and ideas, however, were slow to penetrate England, and the Elizabethan era in the second half of the 16th century is usually regarded as the height of the English Renaissance. The English Renaissance is different from the Italian Renaissance in several ways. The dominant art forms of the English Renaissance were literature and music. Here are some of the famous Renaissance writers with their works that they created. William Shakespeare with his works, Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, Midsummer Night's Dream, Twelfth Night, and Henry V. Next one is Christopher Marlowe with his works, Dr. Faustus, and the passionate shepherd to his love. The third one is John Milton, and his works are Paradise Lost and Lazy Dust. Next one is John Tunn, and his works are The Flea and That Not Me Proud. The fifth is Ben Johnson, and some of his works are The Volpone and None My First Son. And lastly, Edmund Spencer, with his work The Fiery Queen, and the Epitalamion. Visual arts in the English Renaissance were much less significant than in the Italian Renaissance. The English period began far later than the Italian, which was moving into Mannerism and the Baroque by the 1550s or earlier. In contrast, the English Renaissance can only truly be said to begin shakily in the 1520s and it continued until perhaps 1620. Despite some buildings in a partly Renaissance style from the reign of Henry VIII, notably Hampton Court Palace, the vanished Nonsuch Palace, Sutton Place, and later Marnie Tower. It was not until the Elizabethan architecture of the end of the century that a true Renaissance style emerged, influenced far more by Northern Europe than Italy. Periods of the English Renaissance Architecture Elizabeth style. The Elizabethan age is a time period associated with the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, which took place in 1558 to 1603 and is often considered to be a golden age in English history. It was an age considered to be the height of the English Renaissance and saw the full flowering of English literature and English poetry. In Elizabethan theater, William Shakespeare, among others, composed and staged plays in a variety of settings that broke away from England's past style of plays. The Elizabethan age is viewed so highly because of the contrast with the periods before and after. It was a brief period of largely internal peace between the English Reformation with battles between Protestants and Catholics and the battles between the Parliament and the monarchy that would engulf the 17th century. Elizabethan architecture. Elizabethan architecture is the term used to describe the specific style of the buildings in England during Queen Elizabeth I's reign. The architecture of Elizabethan houses was highly distinctive and included features such as glass windows, high chimneys, pillared porches, and thatched roofs. A lot of Elizabethan style was taken from the Italian Renaissance and Dutch architecture. The buildings were very symmetrical and had chimneys and gables on both sides.
Many famous architects were active in the Elizabethan period, such as Robert Adams, Simon Basil, and William Arnold, who designed buildings such as the Montacute House and Wadham College. When the first Tudor monarch, Henry VII, came to the throne in England, he brought a specific style of architecture along with him. The houses were known for their black and white effect and were called Tudor houses. Tudor style houses were built for aristocrats. The outside of Tudor houses were mostly built for show and had large windows and tall chimneys. In wealthy houses, the walls of rooms were lined with oak paneling and many had gardens or mazes outside. After King Henry VII left the throne, England was nearly bankrupt. An economic revival began once Queen Elizabeth took over his place which led to the building of grand, more elaborate houses now known as Elizabethan-style houses. Older buildings were rebuilt and new mansions were created with execute gardens and long galleries. Changes in architecture were also influenced by the Italian Renaissance. This rebuilding of Elizabethan houses became known as the Great Rebuilding. The houses became more solidly structured and stronger rebuilt in stone and timber. New materials were introduced, such as brick. Rich houses had wooden paneling and tapestries or paintings on the walls. Most Elizabethan houses were made from stone, while some were made from a combination of stone and wood. Brick suffered in popularity later due to the influence of the Renaissance. In the Elizabethan houses of the upper and middle classes, Panes of glass were added, replacing wooden shutters, and the interior of homes became lighter and airier. Middle or lower class houses had thatched roofs made of straw or reeds. In Great Elizabethan Manors, the entrance hall granted the most attention and was intended to impress guests and show off one's wealth. The main entry became the most intricate part of the manor house. Entries often had columns, generous carvings, and ornate decorations. Architecture was very important to the church during this time in England, as they believed that the more impressive the architecture, the more the church was praising God. Massive amounts of money were spent on creating superbly built stone cathedrals and churches. Additional Facts Advancements in architecture in the 16th century did not apply to the poor. They continued to live in small huts with dirty floors and basic wooden furniture, while richer citizens enjoyed luxuries such as chimneys and glass windows. In the Middle Ages, rich people's houses were designed for defense rather than comfort, but 16th century life was safer, so houses no longer had to be easy to defend. The Jacobean style borrows a lot of traits from the Elizabethan style of architecture. The Jacobean period is often known as the second half of the Renaissance period of architecture. There is a lot of influence during this period of architecture which meant it was constantly evolving. The style was influenced by the French, Flemish, German, and Italian architectural styles and well as the Elizabethan style. The Jacobean style is the second phase of Renaissance architecture in England, following the Elizabethan style. It is named after King James I of England, with whose reign it is associated. At the start of James's reign, there was a little stylistic break in architecture, as Elizabethan trends continued their development. However, his death in 1625 came as a decisive change towards more classical architecture, with an Italian influence, was in progress, led by Inigo Jones. The style this began is sometimes called Stuart architecture, or English Baroque. Courtiers continued to build large prodigy houses, even though James spent less time on summer progresses round his realm than Elizabeth had, the influence of Flemish and German northern mannerism increased, now often executed by immigrant craftsmen and artists, rather than obtained from books as in the previous reign. There continued to be very little building of new churches, though a considerable amount of modifications to old ones, a great deal of secular building. The reign of James IV of Scotland saw the first decisive adoption of Renaissance motifs in a free form communicated to England through German and Flemish carvers rather than directly from Italy. Although the general lines of Elizabethan design remained, 
there was a more consistent and unified application of formal design, both in plan and elevation. Much use was made of columns and pilasters, round arch arcades, and flat roofs with openwork parapets. These and other classical elements appeared in a free and fanciful vernacular rather than with any true classical purity. With them were mixed the prismatic rustications and ornamental detail of scrolls, straps, and lozenges also characteristic of Elizabethan design. The style influenced furniture design and other decorative arts. Some features of Jacobean style architecture is the use of flat roofs with window bays. They had long galleries with Tudor arches and gables. Traditionally a entrance hall was built so that it was perpendicular to the entrance of the building. In Jacobean houses especially, wooden staircases were also a large feature. Another feature was the use of columns, which came from the French and Flemish styles. Many times, if the house belonged to royals or aristocrats, they also had very large gardens that were decorated nicely. Also, for Jacobean-style homes, the floors were made using wood. There was a very big emphasis on making sure the floors did not look worn so they would use different flooring patterns, often in dark colors. Crew Hall is a Jacobean mansion located near Crew Green, east of Crew, in Cheshire, England. Described by Nikolaus Pevsner as one of the two finest Jacobean houses in Cheshire, it is listed at Grade 1, built in 1615-36 for Sir Randolph Crewe. It was one of the county's largest houses in the 17th century and was said to have brought London into Cheshire. The Jacobean Hall was built for Sir Randolph Crewe between 1615 and 1636. The architect of the original building is unknown, although some historians have concluded that its design was based on drawings by Inigo Jones although of a relatively conservative design, like that of Longleat from half a century earlier, the hall seems to have been considered progressive in provincial Cheshire. As depicted in a painting of around 1710, the original building was square with sides of around 100 feet and featured gabled projecting bays and groups of octagonal chimney stacks. Built around a central open courtyard, the interior had a great hall and long gallery, the main entrance led to a screens passage and the main staircase was in a small east hall. Externally, there was a walled forecourt and formal walled gardens, a range of separate service buildings was located to the west. The hall was extended in the late 18th century and altered by Edward Bloor in the early Victorian era. It was extensively restored by E. M. Barry after a fire in 1866 and is considered among his best works. Other artists and craftsmen employed during the restoration include J. Bernie Philip, J. G. Crace, Henry Weeks, and the firm of Clayton and Bell. The interior is elaborately decorated and contains many fine examples of wood carving, chimney pieces, and plasterwork, some of which are Jacobean in date. The interior of Crew Hall contains a mixture of original Jacobean work, faithful reproductions of the original Jacobean designs, and work in the High Victorian style designed by Barry. The entrance hall in the East Wing was remodeled by both Edward Bloor and Barry. It is paneled in oak and contains a marble chimney piece with Tuscan columns featuring the crew's arms. It opens via a column screen into the central hall, which was an open courtyard in the Jacobean house. Roof. Ed by Bloor at the first floor level, Barry converted the space into an atrium featuring cloisters around the walls, with a wooden gallery over them at the mezzanine level and a tunnel vaulted first floor gallery above. The floor is paved with a pattern of colored marbles and the first floor gallery corridors have stained glass panels. The atrium has a hammer beam roof supported by columns at the gallery level. To the east of the central hall is an accurate reconstruction by Barry of the original staircase, which Nikolaus Pevsner described as one of the most ingeniously planned and ornately executed in the whole of Jacobean England. Heavily carved, the newels feature heraldic animals, which were originally gilded and painted. Hatfield House is a country house set in a large park, the Great Park, on the eastern side of the town of Hatfield, Hertfordshire, England. The present Jacobean House, a leading example of the prodigy house, was built in 1611 by Robert Cecil, 1st Earl of Salisbury and Chief Minister to King James I, and has been the home of the Cecil family ever since. It is a prime example of Jacobean architecture. The estate includes extensive grounds and surviving parts of an earlier palace. The house, currently the home of Robert Gascoigne Cecil, 7th Marquess of Salisbury, is open to the public. An earlier building on the site was the Royal Palace of Hatfield, only part of this still exists a short distance from the present house. That palace was the childhood home and favorite residence of Queen Elizabeth I. Built in 1497 by the Archbishop of Canterbury, King Henry VII's minister, John Cardinal Morton, 
It comprised four wings in a square surrounding a central courtyard. The palace was seized by Henry VIII with other church properties. The nearby parish church of St. Etheldreda's in Old Hatfield once served the bishop's palace as well as the village. Hatfield House is a popular tourist attraction because it has so many objects associated with Queen Elizabeth I, including gloves and a pair of silk stockings that are believed to have been the first in England. The library displays a 22-foot long illuminated parchment roll showing the pedigree of the Queen with ancestors back to Adam and Eve. The marble hall holds the rainbow portrait of Elizabeth. During World War II, Hatfield House was the location of the first civil resettlement unit and acted as headquarters for the scheme. CRUs were created to help repatriated British prisoners of war transition back to civilian life and the luxurious setting of Hatfield was considered very beneficial to these men. On 12 July 1945, the King and Queen visited the crew at Hatfield, which generated significant news coverage. Knoll is a country house and former Archbishop's Palace situated within Knoll Park, a 1,000-acre park located immediately to the southeast of Sevenoaks in West Kent. The house apparently ranks in the top five of England's largest houses, under any measure used, occupying a total of four acres. The current house dates back to the mid-15th century, with major additions in the 16th and, particularly, the early 17th centuries. Its grade one listing reflects its mix of late medieval to Stuart structures and particularly its central facade and state rooms. In 2019 an extensive conservation project, inspired by Knoll, was completed to restore and develop the structures of the buildings and thus help to conserve its important collections. The surrounding Deer Park has also survived with varying degrees of management in the 400 years since 1600. Although its complex history reveals Knoll to have been the result of many periods of development, its national importance is primarily for its 17th century structure. Beyond the Jacobean facade, plentiful evidence still exists of the earlier house. One of the main surviving elements is the northern range of Stone Court. The upper floors contain a series of high-status apartments, and these are demonstrated by a number of structural features, such as the series of large garderobe towers protruding on the north side and the cellars below, which contain some late 15th century wall paintings. Charlton House is a Jacobean building in Charlton, within the Royal Borough of Greenwich in southeast London. Originally it was a residence for a nobleman associated with the Stuart royal family. It later served as a wartime hospital, then a museum and library, and is now a community center. The house was built in 1607-12 of red brick with stone dressing and has an H plan layout. The interior features contemporary staircases, paneled rooms, ornamental ceilings and chimney pieces. It was built by the Crown to house Sir Adam Newton and his royal charge. The walled gardens and some of the perennial borders were redesigned and replanted by the landscape designer Andrew Fisher Tomlin in 2003-2004 for the then London, now Royal Borough of Greenwich with perennial meadow planting to the main walled kitchen garden retaining three ancient prunus app trees. One of the spaces includes an Amnesty International Peace Garden with planting also designed by Fisher Tomlin. Holland House, originally known as Cope Castle, was an early Jacobean country house in Kensington, London, situated in a country estate that is now Holland Park. It was built in 1605 by the diplomat Sir Walter Cope. The building later passed by marriage to Henry Rich, 1st Baron Kensington, 1st Earl of Holland, and by descent through the Rich family, then became the property of the Fox family, during which time it became a noted gathering place for Whigs in the 19th century. The house was largely destroyed by German firebombing during the Blitz in 1940 and today only the east wing and some ruins of the ground floor and south facade remain, along with various outbuildings and formal gardens. In 1949 the ruin was designated a Grade 1 listed building and it is now owned by the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. The building was of a common shape for large houses of the time, containing a center block and two porches. The building received a large expansion between 1625 and 1635 at the direction of the first Earl of Holland, who added two wings and arcades. Plas Teg is a Grade 1 listed Jacobean house in Wales. It is near the village of Pont Blyden, Flintshire between Wrexham and Mould. It is one of the finest examples of Jacobean architecture in Wales, and the finest in North Wales. The house was built by Sir John Trevor I, a prominent courtier of King James I, in about 1610. Sir John died in 1629 and his wife in 1643, leaving the house unoccupied as the English Civil War broke out. It was twice raided by the Roundheads but continued to be passed down to Trevor descendants until the early 20th century. During the Second World War the house was requisitioned by the War Office to billet soldiers. 
In 1945 it was sold to an auctioneer's company, which used it for storage. By the early 1950s, Plosteg was in a state of advanced decay and under threat of demolition. Following a public outcry, the derelict house received a grade 1 listing from CADW, protecting it from demolition. A Trevor descendant, Patrick Trevor Roper, purchased the house and partially restored it with funds from the Historic Buildings Council. He then leased out the house until 1977, when Mr. and Mrs. William Llewellyn bought the house. The couple only used parts of the ground floor, but the rest of the house became little more than a ruin. Bank Hall is a Jacobean mansion in Bretherton, Lancashire, England. It is a grade 2 asterisk listed building and is at the center of a private estate, surrounded by parkland. The hall was built on the site of an older house in 1608 by the Banistres who were lords of the manor. The hall was extended during the 18th and 19th centuries. Extensions were built for George Anthony Legg Keck in 1832 to 1833, to the design of the architect George Webster. Bank Hall, built in the Jacobean style in 1608, is a brick-built mansion of three stories with Dutch gables and a square central tower on the south front. Some of the original brickwork in a diaper flush work pattern is visible on one gable. The house was restored and enlarged by architect George Webster. He added a wing to the west elevations, built a porch on the north side, remodeled the north elevation windows, covered the roofs with blue Cumbrian slates, and finished the walls with stone details. Webster carried out the alterations sympathetically, in a style corresponding to the 17th century building, but the difference is marked by the color of the brickwork and the sharpness of the detail. Most windows were renewed during the restoration and two Italian-style bay windows added to the south front, altering its appearance. Decorative features include lavish stonework and finials on the west wing bay window and false windows on the kitchen chimney stack wall creating a decorative feature on a plain wall. The leg keck coat of arms is carved in stone above the front porch, with two carved green men on either side of the doors. Castle Bromwich Hall is a Jacobean mansion in the Castle Bromwich area of Birmingham, England. It is a grade 1 listed building. The hall is famous for having 12 windows, one for each apostle, and four dormers above, one for each evangelist. The garden door passed through a grapevine which was always trimmed into the form of a cross. The hall and long gallery were paneled with dark oak timber and the dining room with pitch pine from the United States. The ceilings were adorned with designs of fruits and shells. In 1810 a tapestry of three sections made in Brussels was hung in the drawing room. One of the windows in the long gallery had the arms of Sir Edward Devereux and his wife Catherine. There were many secret doorways and hiding holes. Built into the high garden wall was a brick open-air cold water bath dated 1733. The garden maze with six feet high holly hedges was a mirror image of that at Hampton Court. The north garden has double iron gates that lead into the adjacent church grounds. Lilford Hall is a grade 1 listed stately home in Northamptonshire in the United Kingdom. The 100-room house is located in the eastern part of the county, south of Oundle and north of Thrapston. A Grade 1 listed building is considered by the UK government as of outstanding architectural and historic interest. The main exterior of Lilford Hall is a Jacobean-style gentry house of the 1630s built by William Elms the Younger in 1635, related closely with Thorpe Masons through its parallels with other neighbouring houses such as Kirby Hall and Apethorpe Palace. Its plan is traditional and arranged around a U-shaped court with the hall entered by a screen's passage, the great chamber placed over the hall, leading to the principal apartment that terminated with the great bedchamber. The Jacobean house is considered as of considerable significance, and Flitcroft's Georgian alterations in the 1740s are of a similar status. The outstanding contribution is that of Flitcroft in the C1740s with his insertion of a comprehensive set of 18th-century interiors that not only transformed the principal rooms into a sequence of Palladian spaces but brought light into the heart of the building. The play of the sequence of 18th-century rooms within the structure of the Jacobean house is one of the most notable features of the house. Georgian Style, 1700s to 1830 Overview The Georgian Style, with its long history in America, is among our country's most consistently popular styles. Admired for its symmetrical design, classical proportions, and decorative elements, it is commonly associated with the reigns of England's King George I through III. In reality, however, it is directly tied to the work of English architect Sir Christopher Wren, an equivocally the dominant architectural trend in the colonies between 1700 and the Revolutionary War. Georgian's popularity slowed dramatically as architectural tastes 
began to change with the establishment of the United States and the emergence of our American federal style. In the more prosperous northern cities of Boston, New York, and Philadelphia, early generations of Georgian buildings have generally been lost to development. The best remaining examples of original Georgian architecture are in such eastern seaboard cities as Annapolis and Williamsburg, where a less affluent economy helped protect them from demolition. One of the best examples of the Georgian style in Greater Washington, D.C. is Gunston Hall on the banks of the Potomac River in what is now Lorton, Virginia. It was built for George Mason, one of this nation's founding fathers, whose work greatly influenced the Constitution and its Bill of Rights. Mason moved into Gunston Hall in 1759. Much of the inspiration for Gunston Hall came from pattern books brought over from England. These books were an early species of how-to manuals imported from Europe by colonial builders at a time when professional design advice was scarce. Such manuals played an enormous role in spreading the Georgian style throughout the colonies. Typically, pattern books focus on the design details for windows, doors, fireplaces, and molding elements, which were adopted or modified by the builder. With only a professional-looking flourishes, colonial Americans could greatly enhance the appeal of their simple buildings. As the practice evolved, colonial builders gradually learned how to arrange and mass buildings forms as well. The basic Georgian proportion was typically geometrical, with the main block of the building frequently augmented by high fence and wings. The actual symmetry of this style will always be a safe design approach. However, this static configuration does not necessarily optimize the actual functioning of a home. The somewhat less symmetrical federal style that followed was likely in response to this problem. Characteristics The Georgian style utilized many of the hallmarks of Renaissance design, for example, rigid symmetry in building mass, in window and door placement, and even in the layout of interior rooms. Materials Not surprisingly, interpretations of the Georgian style tended to vary with locale. In northern states, it was common to use wood with clapboard or shingle cladding. Occasionally, the corners of the building were decorated with wooden coins to imitate stone. Sometimes, stone and stucco were used instead of wood. In the south, Georgian houses were occasionally constructed of stone and stucco, but Georgian style usually meant brick. The brickwork occasionally incorporated a horizontal belt course between the first and second floors. A classic example of a Georgian with brick detail is Westover Plantation in Charles City County, Virginia. It is a house of exquisite proportions and detail built on the bank of James River in Charles City County. Locally, a modest example of the style built in the 1920s is found at No. 10 Calorama Circle, N.W. Roof A hip roof, sometimes with dormers, typifies the Georgian style. Because of Georgian's relentless symmetry, a more asymmetrical gable roof would be noticeable, inappropriate. The hip roof was popular with Christopher Wren, and therefore with all who admired and emulated his rules of design. When variations were sought, a roof would sometimes sport balustrades further embellished with decorative moldings and trim. Windows Double-hung sash windows along with small panes or lights usually 12 over 12 or 9 over 9, were the standard variations, typically incorporated as a stylistic embellishment. Georgians built of wood often had decorative pediments over the windows, while brick Georgians had decorative brick headers above a window. Entrance As a vehicle for decoration, entrances were often fitted with pediments, broken pediments, arch tops, and OG caps. In the north, wooden pilasters often flanked the entrance, while in the south, doorways were typically enhanced with tasteful brick patterns. Other notable Georgian architecture examples are Cleveden Mansion in Germantown, Philadelphia, Isaac Neeson House in Fayette County, Pennsylvania, 
and Normandy Farm in Montgomery, Pennsylvania. Good afternoon, classmates. Another style that grows during English Renaissance architecture was the Victorian style. Victorian architecture is a series of architectural revival styles in the mid to late 19th century. Victorian refers to the reign of Queen Victoria from 1837 to 1901 and was called the Victorian era, during which period the styles known as Victorian were used in construction. However, many elements of what is typically termed Victorian architecture did not come become popular until later in Victoria's reign, roughly from 1850. The styles often included interpretations and eclectic revivals of historic styles. The name represents the British and French custom of naming architectural styles for a reigning monarch. Within this naming and classification scheme, it followed Georgian architecture and later Regency architecture and was succeeded by Edwardian architecture. A common mental image of a Victorian home looks much like a dollhouse with a elaborate trim and bright colors. The Victorian era spawned several well-known styles including Gothic Revival, Italianate, Second Empire, Queen Anne, Stick Style, Romanesque Style, and Shingle Style. Victorian architecture was originated in United Kingdom during the early 19th century. The Romantic Medieval Gothic Revival style was developed as a reaction to the symmetry of Pelagianism, and such buildings as Font Hill Abbey were built. With the middle of the 19th century, as a result of a technology, construction was able to incorporate metal materials as building components. Structures were erected with cast iron and wrought iron frames, however, due to being weak in tension, their materials were effectively phased out in place for more structurally sound steel. One of the greatest exponents of iron frame construction was Joseph Paxton architect of the Crystal Palace. Paxton also continued to build such houses as Mentmore Towers in the still popular English Renaissance styles. New methods of construction were developed in this era of prosperity, but ironically the architectural styles as developed by such architects as Augustus Bugin were typically retrospective. While not uniquely Victorian, as part of revivals that began before the era these styles are strongly associated with the 19th century owing to the large number of examples that were erected during that period. Victorian architecture usually has many intricate windows frames inspired by the famous architect Elliot Ray. Gothic Revival, Italianate, and Neoclassical are the other styles popularized during the period. Now, the question is, how does it spread in different countries? During the 18th century, a few English architects immigrated to the colonies, but as the British Empire became firmly established during the 19th century, many architects immigrated at the start of their careers. Some chose the United States and others went to Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. In Australia, the Victorian period flourished in Australia and is generally recognized as being from 1840 to 1890, which saw a gold rush and population boom during the 1880s in the states of Victoria in New South Wales. While in Hong Kong, Western influence in architecture was strong when Hong Kong was a British colony. Example structure is the St. Andrew's Church. Spreading all over North America and the United States, Victorian architecture generally describes styles that were most popular between 1860 and 1900s. A list of these styles most commonly includes Second Empire, Stick East Lick, Folk Victorian, Queen Anne, Richardsonian Romanesque, and Shingle Style. The painted ladies are examples of Victorian architecture found in San Francisco, California. As mentioned a while ago, many styles popularized in Victorian era. Of course, due to these geographic differences, there is some variance in style. Below is the list of the most common types of Victorian homes. Gothic Revival, 1830 to 1860. Gothic Revival homes were inspired by the medieval churches in Europe. As such, they're often compared to castles. They're distinct thanks to steeply pitched roofs 
pointed arcs and front-facing gables, which are laden with a delicate wooden trim called verge boards. Italianate, 1840 to 1870. Modeled after Italian Renaissance villas, these homes are typically just two stories. In contrast to other Victorian styles, they have low roofs and wide eaves. However, true to this style of architecture, they also host highly ornamental brackets. Second Empire, 1852 to 1870. Influences for this style can be tracked back to France during the reign of Napoleon III. These houses tend to start out with a simple rectangular or square base. However, there's no shortage of character. They feature mansard roofs which have a heavy pitch on all four sides and plenty of ornate millwork on the home's exterior. Stick East Lake 1860-1890 These homes are identifiable by the fact that they are primarily made of wood, which was a cheap and plentiful materials in the heyday. These homes feature angled wooden framing which is overlaid by wood decorative trim known as stick work. They also typically have pitch, shingled roofs, and double hung windows. Folk Victorian 1870 to 1910. A simple version of the typical Victorian home, folk Victorians are smaller and square, with much less complex floor plans. They're meant for the everyman. However, the Victorian roots can still be found on the decorative trim work outlining their porches and roof lines. Look for the stern spindles, lace-like detailing, and beveled corners. Queen Anne, 1875 to 1905. Perhaps the most famous of all Victorian styles is the Queen Anne. Coming late in Victoria's reign, these properties feature especially heavy ornamentation, gabled roofs, rounded towers, and large windows that are equally functional and decorative. So that we can better understand, here are the key elements and characteristics that define Victorian homes. Two to three stories. Victorian homes are usually large and imposing. Wood or stone exterior. The majority of Victorian styles are used wood siding, but the Second Empire and Romanist styles almost always have outer walls made of stone. Complicated, asymmetrical shape. Unlike the boxy Greek Revival style, Victorian homes have wings and base in many directions. Decorative trim, commonly called gingerbread. Victorian homes are usually decorated with elaborated wood or metal trim. Textured wall surfaces, scallop shingles, patterned masonry, or half timbering are commonly used to dress up Victorian siding. Steep, multifaceted roof or mansard roof. Victorian homes often have steep, imposing roof lines with many gables facing in different directions. The Second Empire Victorian style has a flat-topped mansard roof with windows in the side to allow for maximum space inside the house. One-story porch. A large wraparound porch with ornamental spindles and brackets is commonly, especially in the Queen Anne style. Towers, also known as turret. A Victorian style turret or tower is probably the most prominent home building feature that most people picture in their minds when they think Victorian architecture. Some high end Victorian homes are embellished with a round or octagonal tower with a steep pointed roof. Vibrant colors. Before the Victorian era, most houses were painted all one color, usually white or beige. By 1887, bright earth stones like burnt sienna and mustard yellow were in vogue. Several revival architectural styles famous during the 18th to 19th century were categorized as the Victorian architecture for being built during the reign of Queen Elizabeth. The architecture tagged as the Victorian architecture and the Gothic styles, Italian styles, and the styles inspired by the past periods. And now, to further visualize these styles, we have the following examples of buildings built during the Victorian era. First, we have the Palace of Westminster. The Palace of Westminster, built between the years 1840 and 1870, is one of the most celebrated Victorian architecture in history. It was built by the famous architects Charles Barry and Augustus Pugin and is located in Westminster, London. 
being the house to the House of Parliament of the United Kingdom, it remains one of the most recognizable buildings and the symbol for the world. Its appearance as the inclusion of the famous Gothic styles. The owner of Victorian Palace is the monarch of Great Britain and happens to be the residence for the royals. Numerous monarchical ceremonies are held in this very palace as it is considered to be the most significant symbols of London. Next is the Osborne House. The Osborne House was built by Prince Albert, one of the most renowned architects between the years 1845 and 1851. It is located on the East Coast Isle of Wight of the United Kingdom. Though it was built for Queen Elizabeth and Prince Albert, some of the parts of the estate were turned into a private museum after the demise of the Queen and was opened for the members of the royal family only and used for training the Royal Navy. The private museum is now open for everyone, including royal members and public for tours. Also, we have the Balmoral Castle. The Balmoral Castle, completed in the year 1852, is considered the most renowned castle in the world. It was built by talented architect William Smith with the direction of Prince Albert and is located in the Royal D side of Scotland. The masterpiece was built for Queen Elizabeth and Prince Albert. The estate was primarily brought as private property and then designed like the famous Balmoral Castle with a few modifications made by the Prince. The castle has been able to place itself on the list of Category A buildings and has been an exemplary Scott baronial architecture. Another structure is the Royal Albert Hall. The Royal Albert Hall, built between the years 1867 and 1871, is considered as the famed favorite venue for the entertainment purpose of London. It was built by the two magnificent architects, Captain Francis Folk and Major Henry Y.D. Scott, and is located in Kensington Gore, United Kingdom. The famous hall has been designed in the Italianate style, which hosts live music and concerts by world-famous artists along with the dance performances, award ceremonies, movie screenings, and sports events. It has been organizing such programs since the start of 150 years. Next is the Victoria Building University of Liverpool. The Victoria Building University of Liverpool was built by Alfred Waterhouse between the years 1889 and 1892. It is located in Liverpool, Merryside, England, and also has been listed under the Grade 2 category. The building was primarily built with the concept of university, including the accommodation for teaching, administration, library, and the standard room within the design. It is also former headquarters of the University of Liverpool. The building became the inspiration for the term Red Brick University as it was built using only the red bricks. With the renovation of the building in 2008, it got turned into a museum and was named Victoria Gallery and Museum. Another style of Victorian architecture was the Carson Mansion. The Carson Mansion, built between the years 1884 and 1886, is probably the most celebrated Victorian architect of the United States. It was designed by Samuel Newson and Joseph Carter and is located in Old Town, Eureka, California in the United States. The building is made in the mixture of various famous architectural styles including Italianate, Stick, Islake, and primarily with the form of Queen Anne and is taken as the Grand Victorian home in the United States of America. Then we have the Manchester Town Hall. Manchester Town Hall was built by the renowned architect Alfred Waterhouse between the years 1868 and 1877. It is located in Manchester, England. Built in the neo-Gothic style of architecture, this building is one of the most spectacular Victorian architecture of the Victorian era. The state was primarily built for meetings of the city council with the popularity and its impact. The town hall is now turned into a massive venue for weddings, hostings of programs, conferences, and especially for the filming of movies. Famous movies like Iron Lady, Sherlock Holmes, and Victor Frankenstein used this state to shoot the film for being the most renowned landmarks of Manchester. Now let's take a look at the Palm House of Kew Gardens. The Palm House of Kew Gardens was built the years 1844 and 1848 and is located in the Royal Botanic Gardens United Kingdom. The house was built by the two most skillful architects Decimus Burton and Richard Turner. The magnificent Palm House has been creating history since the time it was built due to the use of rough iron and glass without having any supporting columns. The house has been housing booths 
tropical and subtropical plants from the starting period out which of the plant of palms is the most famous one. The state is taken as the rainforest for the inclusion of such plants. Another one is the Clive Den Pal. The Clive Den Pal was built in the year 1851 by the famous Charles Barry. It is located in Buckinghamshire, South East England. The state was built in Italianate style and is considered as one of the most celebrated architectures of the Victorian era. The building was first built in 1666 and was destroyed by the fire twice, from 1795 and 1849, and it was reconstructed as the Clive Den Pal in 1851. It is famously known as the place of the Profume Affair, an affair between the British War Secretary and a 19-year-old show girl. The masterpiece was converted into a luxurious hotel since the 1980s and remained as one. The gardens of this renowned building are also world famous and considered as the most famous gardens in history. And finally, let us marvel at the beauty of the Victoria Law Courts. The Victoria Law Courts, completed the year 1887, was built by two famous architects, Aston Webb and Ingrid Bell. It is located in the Corporation Street in Birmingham. Let's say it with terracotta and red bricks and falls under the list of grade 1 category. Queen Victoria herself laid the foundation stone, which led it to gain its popularity and leave an impact on the world history. The Victoria Law Court was occupied by the Alaska Works and the small school previously, but now the Magistrate Court of Birmingham is housed in it. As a conclusion, the famous and skilled work shown on the buildings, estates by the great masters in the field of architecture, ended up with the prestigious tag of Victorian architecture and left an impact on the modern day architecture. The works mentioned above have their significance and values, which should be respected and taken as an inspiration by all, including the age, architects, and commoners. I hope you all learned a lot from this topic. Thank you, classmates.